Hi, everybody. Laura here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to be a part of the October release blog op with Pink Fresh Studio. I have a couple of Mary and Bright festive slimline cards to share with you using some of these new October release goodies. But first, I just wanted to, I just had to show you. There's a slew of fantastic new slimline stencils in this October release. And I mean, you just got to look at them. Like there's diagonal stripes. I don't know what that one's called. This one's kind of an argyle pattern builder. There's different variations on stripes. This one here is kind of a, a gradient stripe. The last two are my faves, plaid. I love a plaid. Here's a straight up plaid. And this last one, is, which is the one I'm going to use, is the, di the diamond plaid. So you get two stencils in this particular st uh, diamond plaid stencil set. And I'm going to do one side red, one side green, going traditional holiday festive. So I've got the three shades in the red family using Pink Fresh Studio ink. So I'm using uh, Coral Reef, Passion Fruit, and Berrylicious. And I'm using these Alta New ink blender tools. They're like brushes. I love them because they're large. So you can cover a large amount of area in a short amount of time. But any ink blender tool that you love, that you're used to, use it. Normally I use the, you know, the Ranger ink blenders, but I'm just kind of using these lately. Okay, so now onto the left side, which is going to be greens. I've got fresh pear, key lime, and olive. And let me tell you a little bit about olives. I love the color olive, always have. I think it looks good with me. I kind of have olive skin, but I love to eat olives. Today when I was at Aldi, they have this, you know, Aldi has these seasonal things that they come around, not, you know, you just never know, it's random. But they had these little snack cups, kind of like, you know, you get a fruit cup, but they're full of olives, like big, green, juicy, briny olives in a snack cup. And I bought those. They're not cheap, but they're worth it because I could eat a bathtub of briny, the brinier, the better olives. I love it. And um, it's a treat. And then I bought some pink lady apples. And let me tell you, I kid you not. Do you know what Jolly Rancher candies, the watermelon flavor? These pink lady apples tasted like watermelon Jolly Ranchers. Kid you not. Okay, so now I've got the second stencil on here. I'm going over with the same colors. Not, not spending too much time. I just want a light coating, but I still want to keep that gradient look. And uh, yeah, and you can see here, I always, every time I ink up, especially when I'm using the dark colors, I go off on that scratch paper first. It kind of prevents any harsh initial smudging that you might get with the ink blending. Just something that I do, it works for me. And then, I mean, look at the finished product. It's like spectacular plaid. If I could, I'd buy a pillow like that. Okay, now this is the Merry and Bright Frame stamp and die set. I'm going to die cut the oval frame first because it's a solid die. So you're not going to be able to see if you tried to stamp it first. So you got to die cut it first. Then I adhered it onto some white cardstock and I'm going to emboss the oval frame detail in white onto this black die cut frame. So I rubbed it down with a magic powder bag, inking it up with Versamark ink, and then I will uh, pour on some white embossing powder. This is just a classic oval frame. I think it would be cool if you emboss it in white onto a red frame, or you could emboss it white onto a green frame. You see where I'm going. But um, something about embossing it in white onto color cardstock really makes it papau. Okay, and then this is the Merry and Bright sentiment from the Merry and Bright frame stamp set. I love this font. Can't get enough of it. And then this one has the coordinating die that's see-through, so you can line it up and get it just right. I take it off camera, run it through the die cutting machine. Now, one thing you got to remember is that there is a tittle. There's a tittle for that eye. So you don't lose that. You'll be very sad. And okay, so this is the new You Are My Favorite floral swag. I'm inking it up with Misty Coast ink, which is the lightest gray. And I kind of want it to be a, a slightly a no-show, but I need to have that floral outline so that I can see what I'm doing. Now, this is what is so cool about these new floral, I'm going to call them floral swags. They have a stencil set to go with them. So, and this one has three stencils 
and it's called You Are My Favorite. And I'm going over it. This is like the solid first base coat. I'm using that coral reef again, but you know, with my ink blender tool, I've used all the darkest shades and lighter shades on this tool. Now you can clean it off. I don't take time to clean it. I just let the cards fall and see whatever kind of colors I can get. So there you have the base coat with the stencil. Now I'm laying on the second stencil, which is more of kind of like a detail. And then I pulled out passion fruit, slightly darker red, going with a heavy hand, getting a nice rich, you know, detail on that. Lift that up, look at it coming together. It's so easy, it makes you giddy. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and then now I laid on the third stencil, the third stencil, the third stencil, which is the leaves. And I'm using the uh, fresh pear, a little bit of key lime. And I just go over here and there, you know, just to give some gradient, some parts darker, some parts lighter, you know, just to keep it spicy. And there you have the leaves. Now, this is it. You're done coloring the You Are My Favorite floral. Look at it. So pretty. And then there's a coordinating die. That wasn't enough. Okay, so I'm lining up this die cut and I use, this is a tragic story. Halfway through this video, I ran out of my beloved post-it tape. I know it's tragic. Okay, I'm gonna die cut this oval frame right into that floral swag. I know it sounds like kind of harsh to do that, but you know what, you, sometimes you gotta go hard or go home. Cause I didn't wanna cover up too much of this gorgeous plaid background. So I just wanted some floral accents, but I didn't want too much floral. You know what I mean? It's just a little dabble, do ya? So everything's getting popped up. Background, frame, sentiment, floral swags. And then you zhuzh it. You zhuzh it like your life depended on it, right? And then look at this. It's floral, it's plaid, and then don't forget the tittle, right? And to finish it off, a few of these Pink Fresh Studio gems and jewels. I always do a mixture. They're just the perfect little delicious bling. Now I got to show you, I did another one, same exact thing, just a different color combination. And would, you know, it, it's kind of non-traditional for Christmas, but I kind of dig it. You know what I'm saying? It's pink and orange. And then for the floral swags, I did kind of aqua. And then you have the traditional one here. Which one do you like better? Traditional or non? What kind of person are you? It kind of tells a lot about a person if you like traditional or if you like to live on the edge and spice it up. So let me know which one you prefer. Make sure and check out the rest of the Pink Fresh Studio October release blog hop. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.